get started. So we'll find up there with a little Mortal Kombat classic game. If you haven't played it, you need to play it. Fantastic. Spent a lot of time there. For those of you who don't know, this is Sub-Zero. My favorite character in Mortal Kombat. Can freeze you and whatnot. Why to pick Sub-Zero? Because we're going to talk negative exponents. They're below zero. So zero exponents, negative exponents. What's going to happen here? Let's check it out. Take some notes and get rolling here. Uh, let's start with this example over here. So really, we're going to look for a pattern here. What is 2 to the first power? Well, it's just 2. 2 squared is 2 times 2. Boom. Which is 4. No worries there. 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Times it by 2 again, we get 16. Times it by 2 again, we get 32. Fantastic. So no problem there. That's old school. We were doing that before. No worries. What happens if I continue this pattern the other way? What in the world is 2 to the 0 pattern? <clears throat> I'm sorry, what is the 2 to the 0? What is the number here? So let's check it out here. Maybe I shouldn't have uh, show, shown the work here. Let's just slide that on over. This was to the 4th. Oh my goodness, we need to bring that with it. There we go. Maybe it's easier to see the... Hey, get in there. Get in there. There it is. Okay. So... Maybe it's easy to see the pattern now. I want 32, 16, 8, 4. So what is happening here? If I go down, I'm timesing by 2 every time. So if I go up, what's happening? I'm dividing by 2. So what do you think this is? If I divide it by 2, 2 to the 0 power is 1. Huge rule right there. In fact, anything to the 0 power equals 1. So 0 power always, always, always equals 1. No matter what, 4 to the 0. Boom, it's 1. 9 to the 0. It's 1. Negative 327 raised to the 0 power. 1. Awesome. I love that rule. Easy to remember. Good to go. So 0 power always equals 1. What's next, though? Can I keep this pattern going? Sure. I can go 2 to the negative 1. 2 to the negative 2. And 2 to the negative 3. Are you for seriousness? Yes, I am for seriousness. Let's check this out. What's the pattern doing? It's cutting in half every time I go up. So what's going to happen if I can... These are all going uh, backwards by 1, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1. So what's going to happen? I'm going to cut this in half. This becomes 1 half. Oh my goodness. Can I cut a half a half? What is 1 half of a half? It becomes 1 fourth. And what is 1 half of 1 fourth? It is 1 eighth. Oh my goodness. So what's the rule here? What's going on? Well, let's check it out. This is 2 to the negative 1 equals 1 half. So what does that really mean? This really means I took that 2 and moved it to the bottom. It is really 1 over 2 to the first power. How about this one? This is 1 over 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. So this negative is moving it to the bottom of the fraction. 1 over 2 cubed. So if I want to get rid of that negative, I move it to the bottom and, it, and it's a positive. So negative exponents flip it to the bottom. Holy cow, so if I had something like this, x to the negative 5, what does that mean? Well, I want to rewrite this without negatives. Uh, I'm going to put 1 over x to the 5th. So who knew? Sub-Zero was really a math character that whole time in Mortal Kombat, doing his fatalities and things like that. Awesome. Let's check it out. Can we rewrite these only using positive exponents? Let's see what we got here. So maybe you need to write these down. So 2 to the negative 3rd, what does that mean? It means 1 over... 2 to the third power. Awesome. And it says use exponents, so we're good to go. If you want to multiply that out because you were interested, 2 to the third power is just 2 times 2 times 2. So that's 1 over 8. Awesome. And we just, holy cow, these are the same examples off the last page. I just made those up too. Uh, x to the negative 5, this would be x to the fifth. Excellent. And we can't write that anymore. Hopefully these are new examples. We got something new? Uh, yeah, sure. Try 3 to the negative 2. What happens here? It moves it to the bottom. It is 1 over 3 squared. How about this? What is the negative 4? What is the base of this power? The base of negative 4, so the base of this case, is y. It's not the 2, it's just the y. So the power of this is negative 4 only for that base of y. So the 2 is just chilling. He stays right there. What's going to happen? My y comes to the bottom. This is y to the 4th. And really the way we like to write this is to multiply it out. What is 2 times 1? If the 2 stays on top, the y ends up on the bottom. So you need to express it like this. This is the answer. But that's what's happening here. And it's just like multiplying fractions. 2 is like 2 over 1. Multiply across the top. Multiply across the bottom. 
Or just think about it. The Y is the only thing being raised at negative power. It's the only thing moving to the bottom. Fantastic. We're killing it. Let's go to the next page. All right. Let's take a look at rewriting these um, using positive exponents. So I've got this big, long thing here. Uh, how do I... How do I change this? Well, I'm looking for these negative exponents. If you want to think about this, you're saying 2x squared, y to the negative third, remember, is 1 over y cubed, z squared. And this is all multiplication. That is technically right. It just looks weird. Essentially, whatever happens when you have this negative, you're going to move it to the other side of like a fraction. So like 2x squared will stay on top. y to the third moves to the bottom. So we're going to move this to the bottom. What's that? That's what that 1 over y cubed is. The z squared stays on top, so it looks like this. This is how I want to see it written. Something like this. So you're going to move this to the bottom of a fraction. Sometimes you get a creative fraction. Sometimes you don't. So that is the correct answer here. Same thing over here. I already have a fraction. Who's going to move to the bottom? We'll look for the negatives. We've got negative 2, negative 3. Positives stay the same. So what is this going to equal? My 1 stays on top. My 4 is on bottom. The a squared moves to the bottom. And when you move it to the bottom, it takes its sign. So it becomes a squared. Uh, that a 2 is positive. b to the 5 stays on top. c to the 3rd stays on, on bottom. It moves to the bottom because of the negative. So we're going to kind of rearrange where these things are. That's the answer. Fantastic. So moving on, it gets a little bit trickier. What happens when we start trying to do some of our different operations? Like in this case, what am I doing? Well, I have a grouping symbol, yeah? I've got these parentheses. Some people do PIMDOS. we got grouping, GIMDOS. What is my rule with a grouping symbol uh, to an exponent? I have an exponent. It means what? If I look at GIMDOS, if you write it this way, exponent means multiply. So when I do this, this is going to be what? X. This is 3 to the 1. And then 1 to the 2 is 3 squared. This is negative 3 to the 2 is negative 6. And 0 times anything is 0. So that's still y to the 0. And really, we know y to the 0 as what? y to the 0 is just 1. So you can put times 1, or I'm not going to put anything. But if you times by 1, it doesn't change a thing. And can I simplify this? Sure. What is 3 squared? 3 squared is 9. x to the negative 6. So first, we're going to do our things. Then when we're finished, we're going to rewrite it. So go ahead and do all our operations. In this case, we had to simplify it. Then you can move the exponent to the bottom. So that moves it to the bottom of the fraction, or 9 over x to the 6. Very, very nice. Let's take a look at the next one. OK, I got a lot going on here. Uh, looks like I'm multiplying these two things. So I'm going to multiply this times this. When I multiply, what do I do with my exponents? Well, uh, if they have the same base, I'm going to add them. So m to the fourth, m to the negative 3 gives you m to the 1. How about n? n to the first. I'm going to add it to n to the negative 5. This is n to the negative 4. And remember, number, my coefficients are different. What is just 2 times 3? I can go ahead and multiply those out and say 2 times 3 is 6. So this is only for when we have the same base and we're doing the powers. Base was m, base was n. All right, fantastic. Now, once you have that done, can you rewrite it? Sure. Who's going to move to the bottom? The negative is. So everybody else is going to stay on top. You can write 6m to the 1, or you can just leave it like that. And when I move that negative 4 to the bottom, it makes it positive. So these are written with positive exponents. So please do the rule first. Then after you've done the rule, go ahead and get rid of that negative exponent. Fantastic. Two more of these. So same kind of idea, but we're doing what? In this case, we're doing division. And what happens with my powers in this? If they have the same base, when I divide, it's like subtracting. So first thing I always do is I start off with the coefficients here. Does it reduce? Sure. 2 goes into that once, 2 goes into that twice. So I'm looking at 2 uh, over 1. And what is my x going to go to? Remember, the rule was if you divide, you subtract. So 2 minus 5 is negative 3. And if you have to write that out, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. That is my x's. What about y's? y to the minus 3 minus 2. So be very careful. That's to the minus 5. So a lot of people mess up their signs. Make sure you get that right. Minus 3 minus 2. Write it off if you have to is really minus 5. There's no z's on top. So if you wanted, you could say z to the 0 power. What is 0 minus 4 when I subtract them? 0 minus 4 is minus 4. Fantastic. So can we take this and move the negative? So only the positives ones will stay on top. So 2 is on top. Nothing stays with them. 1 on bottom. We've got x cubed, y to the 5th, z to the 4th. That makes them positive when they move to the other side. This is my final answer. 2 over x cubed, y to the 5th, z to the 4th. Excellent. Very good. Very good. What's on the other side of this? Oh, I just threw this at you to see what would happen. Uh, I love something like this. Go ahead and do your rule. Remember, we've got a grouping symbol to an exponent. So what do you do with an exponent? You multiply. So what is y? Wait a minute here. Everybody's being raised to zero power. What does that equal? 
it's got to equal 1. Even you realize that, you could say 2 to the first of the 0 is 2 to the 0, x to the 0, because that's 1 times 0, 7 times 0, it's 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. Uh, so if the whole thing is raised to 0, it is just 1. Excellent. Let's wrap it up here. We're going to end up with bring the pain. Let's bring the pain here. I found this picture from WWF Powers of Pain. They were like tag team champions one year. They were bringing the pain. I'm pretty sure this is actually Mr. Sullivan. This is what he did before he taught math. He was bringing the pain, part of Powers of Pain, tag team combo. Uh, all right, let's bring the pain. And also, I got the little wallpaper at the bottom if you want to make sure you get the Brussy Llama comment. Works perfectly here. I see some negative exponents, but I'm not going to address them until I do the rules. So let's just do the rules. These look intense. They're not bad. Just go step by step. Where do we got to start? We got to start parentheses. I'm going to start on top. Uh, what can I do? I've got the power right here. So I need to address this three. So what do I do? Remember, this is like two to the first. So it's two to the first to the third. So it's two to the third. I multiply x to the one to the third. That'll be x to the third. Ooh, my threes are looking rough. Oh my gosh. I think that could be worse. Uh, y to the 4 to the 3rd is y to the 12. And now I'm going to times that by what? I'm going to multiply this by, just bring it up, 3x to the negative 3 uh, y squared. Fantastic. I'm going to actually even go ahead and say, what is 2 to the 3rd? 2 to the 3rd is 2 times 2 times 2, so I get 8. So it's really 8x cubed y squared, and I'm going to multiply that by 3x to the negative 3y squared. So really, that's what it turns into. Let's change color because that's a lot of red up there. So I'm kind of working up, but let's go ahead and multiply this out. What do I get when I multiply this out? I get 8 times 3. I'm looking at 24. x to the third times x to the negative 3. Remember, I add. So what's 3 plus negative 3? Holy cow, I get x to the 0. y to the 12th. I'm adding these, well, really, I'm multiplying the base of y's, but I add the exponents, so I get y to the 14th. So this is my top. What is going on in the bottom? Uh, really not too much to simplify, but y to the 0 is just 1, so I can just get rid of it. Uh, kind of scribble, scribble, scribble. <laughs> and what's left down here? We've got 4x to the negative 3. So now it's just a matter of there's my, uh, the top turned into this, the bottom is that. Let's go ahead and simplify. Can I reduce this? Don't subtract them. It's not a subtraction problem. It's reducing. I'm going to change colors here. Let's go to green. So 4 goes into 24 how many times? 6 times. So really, I'm looking at 6. 6 over 1, which is just 6. Now subtract our exponents. I've got x to the 0 minus x to the negative 3. So you're saying 0 minus negative 3. Be very careful with your signs. That really means what? Minus minus really means plus. So it's a positive 3. So this becomes 6x cubed, and then y to the 14th. You can leave that y to the 0 here if you want. There's no y's on the bottom, so it's going to be y to the 14th, or 14 minus 0. And when I finish that, I start with negative exponents, but my answer doesn't have anything, so I don't have to rewrite it. So a much simpler form of that big nasty fraction would just be write it like that. We simplified. We did it. We are good to go. Excellent. Um... I don't remember what's coming up. I think we got some kind of game show fail on this. Don't forget, at the end of the chapter, there's a review, and there's a pretty funny video from some other school that made a nice review uh, song. If you need a song, you like the songs to do it, check out the review video for this chapter. Pretty funny stuff. Good luck on the mastery check. Hope it goes well. Peace. If Jacob stands on Spencer's shoulders, they are two and a half yards high. How many feet is that? Your classmate Marky said 78. There's 352 feet in a yard. So what do you think? Um, yeah. You can go with Marky's answer, you can go with your answer. I'm going with your answer. I'll lock that in.
decided to go with her answer, which was 78. The basic question here really is how many feet are in, are in two and a half yards? Right. How many feet are in one yard seems to be the big stumbling block. <laughs> Does three ring any kind of a bell? Yeah. You, yeah. you had 352, which is close to the days in a year. And you had 52, which were weeks in a year. And I know it's a chemistry problem. Two and a half yards. If there's three feet in a yard, two yards is six feet. Half a yard is one and a half feet, which makes seven and a half feet. I am sorry, Jennifer. Seven and a half is the correct answer. And you're leaving here with nothing. And I want everybody to win a million dollars, but I got to tell you, that was the most entertaining zero we have ever had. Will you do me a favor? And I learned something. I am not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll see you.